Good morning, everybody. This is Steve from the Whirly Bogger. It is October 17th, 2023. I'm here at the gauging station in the farmlands in Ellensburg. Beautiful morning, nice and crisp, about 42 degrees. <clears throat> so hard not to love this time of the year. As you can see, I've done my report all year from this spot, so you can kind of gauge and see how the river is. Those of you that follow us along, we appreciate it, thank you. The river is the lowest flow I think that we've ever seen in 30 years. It is absolutely a trickle. Going at a very, very slow, slow rate. We're basically releasing the amount of water that's coming into the reservoirs as a mixture, which is pretty interesting. We've had our spring Chinook spawn sockeye now are spawning in the river and now we're starting to see coho enter the system and it's going to be interesting to see if the sockeye can actually leave lake clay ellum because of the amount of water and actually get up into the headwaters and do some spawning this fall it'll be it'll be interesting to see if they're able to make it with this amount of water. Mm. We like to have faith knowing that the people are in charge or know what they're doing, so I guess time will tell. Mm. So with the lowest water ever that I've ever seen in 30 years here on the Yakima, things are quite a bit different for fall fishing. But the weather continues to be Absolutely unbelievable, warm. We're just keeping water temperatures warm, keeping the water temperature well above the 50 degree mark, which is kind of stagnating the hatches a little bit. Some days the blue wings will get going. Some days the March Browns, or not March Browns, some days the October Caddis will get going. And then other days it's just non-existent. Not a lot of fish feeding, especially through the farmlands area of the river. Aaron's reporting up in the Clay Ellum area, good hatches of blooming olives, October Caddis, but there's over a thousand foot difference in elevation between Clay Ellum and Ellensburg so colder water up there which is helping with the hatches there not that the fishing hasn't been good here the fishing has been good but not our typical scenario of fishing to rising fish constantly that's unbelievable yeah. Sherry just asked if they're if we're afraid of the boat. <laughs> and I never would have cast that if she hadn't told me. I, mean, I would I would not have cast that far upstream unless you had told me to. You know what I mean? Oh, that's We're still expecting that that will happen, but this week the weather's supposed to be very, very nice. Fishing's still been very good. Yeah, don't just when I say that, don't just assume that you can come out and throw a fly around and catch a fish. It's like your drifts have to be spot on. This low, low, clear water. I mean, look how clear that is. They can see everything. So any little minuscule 
obstruction in your in your presentation, any amount of drag is just not gonna get on your fly. really have to work on your line control and your mending and your presentation. If you can do that, you'll have a great day for sure. Because even, even though the bug hatches are, are non-existent, the bugs under the water are still moving around a lot just waiting. So it's not like there isn't plenty to eat for fish. I mean, the fish that we are, that are hitting the net, you know, are just fat and healthy. They're just eating like there's no tomorrow. One thing we kind of noticed this fall, you know, lot, lots of people fishing, lots of people in boats, lots of people fishing uh, off the shore, which is great. People are getting out, but you have to remember your river etiquette so whether you're in a boat or whether you're wade fishing you know everybody's out here on the river fishing trying to relax peace of mind so a confrontation at the boat launch you know we're on the river it's not a good way to start your day and it's not a good way to finish up your day so just remember think think about the other guy give him plenty of space plenty of room especially if you're in a boat move around them the best that you can the river's low so you know there's just certain times that a boat's just gonna have to have to pick and go through the you know through the deepest water on the channel on the river not fishing through that water and just move on remember think about the other person give them plenty of space that's kind of difficult in this day and age I mean, people just think about themselves a lot I was blessed uh, we missed the report last week so uh, I was blessed to be on the on the river every day thank you for that appreciate it my friends had a great time excellent fishing <clears throat> you can see how beautiful it is out here leaves are turning this central washington you can see that sunshine so it makes for beautiful fishing days but absolutely have to be spot on with your drifts just low clear water i just i can't emphasize enough how important it is you can use a wide range range of flies you know october caddis patterns have been good on certain days uh any types of of betas nymphs it was a variety of of mayflies coming off we're seeing light k hills some some mahogany duns happening and of course blue wing olives in a variety of different sizes anywhere from like size 14 to 20 so just kind of be prepared with your fall arsenal and you'll be good to go and it looks you know according to my good friend mr Rainer. We're supposed to be expecting an El Nino year. So hopefully that'll happen. We'll get lots of water in the reservoirs, but it'll stay warm. So as long as that happens, fishing will stay good here. And as the temperatures drop, we'll, we'll start to see those big mayfly through the farmlands and, and lower river. Sister's been getting uh, folks coming in that uh, have been fishing in the basin lakes, Lake Lanise, Lake Nunley, Dry Falls. He's reporting that they got good fishing going on there, mostly coronamid fishing. 
with the lake fishermen are reporting uh, fish are in good shape and it's been fishing very well real low low wind here too over the last week and a half all, it, it, except for last night the wind kind of blew in overnight but absolutely beautiful morning here so if you're heading out on the river we got some plans to fish this week it's gonna be great so enjoy your time out here we appreciate everybody uh, coming by the fly shop too supporting us greatly appreciated especially in this day and age you would think after 30 years it would be easier than ever but it just isn't but we love the uh, we love the challenge and we appreciate everybody's support the shop through the guide service give us a call we'll continue to fish as long as mother nature allows us we love it we appreciate you and uh, give the fly shop a call if we can help you with anything that you need hey everyone i wanted to add a couple more things in my report just for a heads up with you uh the first thing is is here at reinhardt park you can see our nice boat launch we'll discuss that in just a second but if you are putting in here or if you're coming in floating from up above you have to be very very careful here underneath the bridge uh, there's a bunch of old bridge pilings but the river is super super low again as low as we've ever seen it in my 30 years of guiding here you can see underneath the bridge there there's some pilings that are sticking up uh, we've had we've had two accidents here in the last week a pontoon boat and a drift boat so you have to be very very careful uh, if you're coming in from from up above stay way 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 to the right if you're gonna dump here at Reinhardt what I suggest what I always do is dump in pull your boat way up so it gives you plenty of time to be able to maneuver and go across river and then go through safely you have to make sure that you pick your right line. Other than that, there's still a portage that you need to do in here down at the tree farm. Not a big deal, but beavers, you know, things are constantly shifting around. I notice, you know, with high flows, you know, the river always pins big trees and stumps and root wads all, all together, but as soon as the river drops, all that stuff breaks loose and stuff moves around too as well so you notice that on a daily basis so just a heads up there and then also you know that we've been working on our access project Yakima River and I've compiled a list of people again that would like to uh, sit on the committee so we can start getting some some projects underway if you uh, if you're interested in that or you know somebody that's interested in that please contact us at the pro shop get your name on the list and uh, next month we're going to uh, submit that to the county of commissioners here at the public lands board and we'll form a new committee after the new year and hopefully we can start getting some projects underway so I've had lots of interest in it and uh, the more the better people from from all aspects of uh, the fishing community guides biologists everybody that can help out would be fantastic and much appreciated we'll uh, we'll create some more access points on the river and start to spread our pressure out you can see especially as this fall the amount of pressure that's the river has been receiving, especially in the canyon, south of Ellensburg. Not, and not just to, to pick on that, but throughout the entire river. Especially after losing our, our, our uh, boat launch at Bristol Flats, it makes it almost near impossible to fish a huge chunk of river. So 
being able to work on some projects there. We did take one of the owners of Bristol Flats out uh, in September, and there was some, some talk about possibly reopening that to guides only next year. They had problems with people, of course, leaving the gate open, not paying, you know. And this is what happens, you know, we get, uh, you know, we get private landowners that are gracious enough to let us use their property and then one group tends to ruin it for everybody else. So keep a heads up on that. We'll make some more access on the river. You want to get involved and do something good, give me a call. We'd love to have you. Appreciate it very much. Have a great week, everybody.